Thank you so much. I love our map support team and boy, did they work their, their little fannies off the last couple of days at mega camp. So welcome to the day after mega camper. I like to say like, you know, January 1st of, of language of sales day, because it's the day after mega camp and it's about a week before we're going to launch um, our language of sales class. So welcome to, what did you just say? As I was preparing to meet with all of you today, I was looking at all the different educational opportunities that you have available to you right now. I mean, my, my head is on overload for mega camp. Does anybody else feel that way? You can just give me a thumbs up, a nod, put it in the chat, a yes or whatever, right? Um, if you if you were there, great. And if not, I mean, put it on your put it on your growth plan to attend in the future. Um there's so many different educational opportunities. You know, there's information coming at us from every single direction and sales pitches, trying to get you to buy the next shiny object or the instant system that's, oh, it's automatically gonna get you more business. Well, I wanna share a little story with you. And I remembered this while I was at MAGA camp. It wasn't long ago that I was watching Gary on stage at one of the events. And I remember exactly where I was sitting. It was about the fourth row, just off to the left of the stage. And he was interviewing an agent as he does, right, on a panel. And this one happened to be a one-on-one. -on -one. And, the, and the agent was sincerely humbly speaking about their success. I mean, they really were coming from a humble place. And Gary had asked, well, what did you do differently? I mean, what was your magic pill? Because everybody's always looking for the magic pill or something along those lines. And the agent answered, and this was a quote, I got back to the basics. I got back to the basics. And of course, as only Gary can, he retorted, well, who gave you permission to get away from the basics? And of course, a large part of the audience chuckled. And, a, and I think you all know where I'm going with this. Um, you know, what do you think caused Gary to ask that? Right. It's because most of us gradually float away from the basics, from the things we're supposed to be doing every day, the things that created our success in the very beginning that made us who we are. I mean, you've probably heard the statistic that a rocket ship on its way to the moon is literally off course 97% of the time. 97% of the time, it's course correcting. That means every minute, it's only on course 18 seconds of every 60 seconds. Man, that sounds like a lot of work to be off course. A lot of correcting. In MAPS, we talk about three foundational classes. Obviously, BOLD is one. Uh, career Visioning is the other. And the third in the class that completes the trifecta is MAPS Language of Sales. Gary Culler says it, taking these classes is like going to school and advancing a grade level every single time. So before we go any further, let's take a moment to congratulate each other for carving out time to actually be here today, to focus on one of the most basic of the basics, communication, talking. So look right into the camera, into the screen, and I'm gonna count us down. And, what, and when you hear the word now, I just want you to yell, great job at the screen, okay? So three, two, one, now, great job. <laughs> There you go. I heard a couple of you that might be off mute. Fantastic. That's it. Whether you heard it or not, there was a collective energy that, that came forward from that. So let's let's get started. A little bit about me. That's me. Um, if you've been to one of our webinars before, you know my name is Graham so, so nicely uh, told you earlier is Caramal. I am a performance coach with MAPS Coaching. Um, I've I've been with MAPS over eight years. I've had the honor and privilege of teaching this, this course for about five years now. I've got all kinds of credentials that are on the screen. I'm not gonna bore you by reading them. Um, it's one of the things that I do want you to hear though, is that I am passionate about language, language skills, and how we can use our language for good to help others. Because ultimately, there's plenty of other plenty of other industries, sales industries we could be in. And yet we get to help people buy, sell, invest, build wealth in something that they also hold dear to them. And it's their home. 
It's their home. There isn't another industry like ours. Um, language of sales was actually the very first course I took when I joined Keller Williams way back when in 2008. And I'm 100% not, not kidding you here when I say I use these principles every single day. So in our short time today, we're going to focus on a language pattern referred to as direct cause and effect. Direct cause and effect. So if you're, if you're taking notes at home, it's, it's a pretty simple one. It refers to the belief that the world operates on the, on the presumption or the concept of cause and effect. In other words, one thing causes another thing to happen or the result. Cause, effect. And based on this assumption, it's it's common to carry the thought process through your language structure, because after all, most of our language is habitual. We're using words that are just a habit to us. We're used to using them. We use the same words and word patterns over and over and over. So if you're looking to strengthen your communication skills through the use of language, it might be beneficial to imply that one thing causes or is caused by another. So let's pause for a moment because I absolutely want to make something clear to you. Using elevated language skills is not manipulation. It's not manipulation. Sometimes we'll hear that, well, you know, if, if I say that, aren't I manipulating them? No, because the definition of manipulation is this, exerting shrewd or devious influence, especially for one's own advantage. So if I'm going to use those skills, it would have to be for my advantage. Now, someone could argue, well, yeah, if you get them to work with you, you're ultimately going to get a paycheck. Yes, but they get the bigger payoff. They get you helping them. And that's why we're doing it. We're helping our clients meet their goals. The fact that we get a paycheck, that's just the great bonus to us, right? So what we're doing here is teaching you a technique to strengthen what you're already doing so that the other person in the conversation can actually achieve their goal. Whose goal? Their goal. Always remember that. So back to direct cause and effect. Um, direct cause and effect and the belief that one thing causes another to happen or result. I mean, what's interesting is that this belief holds true even when there's not well-formed or logical support or demonstrable evidence to support that actual causal connection. In language, when you form a causal relationship, causal cause, um, between two things, and it sounds true, guess what? Your listener is rarely going to challenge it. Everyone following so far, give me a thumbs up or a yes in the box if you're following. Fantastic. I'm seeing a lot of thumbs up. Woo awesome. So this language pattern is straightforward and it's very simple to learn. And that's what we like to do in these little promos is give you something that you can take, put into effect right away. So here it is. Direct cause and effect is based on the belief that we said that the world operates on the concept of cause and effect. X causes Y, where X is the cause and Y is the effect. To create direct cause and effect, uh, to create a direct cause and effect language sentence, here's what's important to remember. Here's what's important to remember. You use X to create something that you can mutually agree on. And you use Y to create the future that you want the listener to believe or experience. And again, based on what we said earlier, it's got to be something that's in alignment with their motivation, what they want. Okay. So the bottom line is you mutually agree on something and that it causes the future to happen. So let's take a look at some keywords that you would use when using this pattern. So let's see. There we go. These are what I call bridge words. It would be X causes Y. 
X creates Y, X allows Y, X forces Y, X makes Y, X invokes Y. So if anyone wants to take a screenshot, that's just fine. As Graham put in the box, this recording is going to be available so you can go back and grab a screenshot at a later time. So here are some examples of the direct cause and effect bridge words. You can see how each of them would go in a sentence. If you say, this drives that, this stimulates that, this illustrates that, this urges that, cause, effect. So let's do some examples and listen closely to identify the cause and effect. So here's one. Listing with me causes your home to sell. Listing with me causes your home to sell. Now, remember what I said earlier. Listing with me causes your home to sell. Is it 100% true that just because they list with you, it's that's going to be the cause that causes it to sell? No. And yet, if I say, you know, Chris, automatically you know that listing with me causes, causes your home to sell you're gonna go along with it. I'm bringing you along with my language pattern. You're, the person on the other end of that isn't going to argue externally or internally with it. So let's look at another one. Pricing the property correctly for the market leads to more offers. Now, again, does it automatically mean that just because you price the property correctly, it, you're gonna get more offers? No. And yet when you say it with conviction, this causes that, this leads to that, the person on the other end, their unconscious isn't going to argue. It's what we call getting a yes from them. Their unconscious mind is going, huh, okay, that makes, that makes sense. And really, I mean, it should, pricing the property correctly for the market should lead to more offers, but it's not a guarantee. Let's look at another one. Writing this offer illustrates your understanding of the market. Well, does it? Because have we all written offers where we're kind of like a little contentious with the person writing the offer? Where they're going, they're going, no, I want to go in fifty thousand dollars less, and you're going, oh no, that's not going to get it there. And yet, when you say something like this, you know, writing this offer, the solid offer, illustrates your understanding of the market. What does that do to the listener on the other side? How does it make them feel? Makes them feel good. And when people feel good in your presence, they're going to follow your lead. So writing the offer illustrates your understanding of the market. Let's do one more. The fact that you're here today learning allows your business to grow to a higher level. So once again, is it 100% true? No. Is it? possible? Oh, heck yeah. Heck yeah. Because I'm guessing some of you have already learned something that you're like, this is so simple. I can do this. I can do this right now today. And that's the point. That's the point. That's what we do in language of sales. We teach you little things to take what you're already doing, the way you're speaking, and just ever so slightly make it more effective, more effective. So let's look at, let's look at a few more here. Some more samples. So I'm going to say this, just calling you today or just me calling you today makes you realize that we should set an appointment to get the house sold. So what's the cause? Everybody type in the chat box. What's the cause? And you can synopsize. You don't have to like copy all the words exactly. The cause is. Right. The cause is anything before the bridge word. That's the big hint, right? It's the phone call, right? Makes them realize, the, in which case, the, the effect is, what is the ultimate effect of the sentence? Let's skip the bridge word for a moment. What's the effect that they're going to get? And go ahead and type that in the box. What's the effect that the person listening is going to get? Mm 
Dave got it. He nailed it first. It's getting the house sold, right? So let me let me say that. Let me say that to you. So Dave, just me calling you today makes you realize that we should set an appointment to get your house sold. So just because I called means you're going to sell your house? No. And yet, are you really going to argue with that? No, because unconsciously your brain is going along with it. Well, yeah, me call, you called me. It makes, I definitely realize we should set an appointment to get the house sold. So, so great job. Let's, let's do another one. Us being together today demonstrates to you that you're feeling serious about hiring the right agent. So let's sign the contract now and put me to work for you. So what's the cause? The cause is us being together, right? Or you could synapse that saying, you know, meeting, us us being in the same place, us being together, et cetera. Whatever's before that bridge word. Obviously, the bridge word demonstrates. Demonstrates is a, is a, is a great word because it makes the person on the other end feel em empowered, like, ooh, they're demonstrating something, right? Us being together today demonstrates. What's the effect in this one? And it's kind of a trick, trick question here because there's actually multiple. And that's why I did the sentence. You're feeling serious, right? Feeling serious. It's something we want to tell people to do. Hiring the right agent, right? Signing a contract now and me working for you. Multi, multi layers. Look at that. You guys are on the advanced course already. Right. Just being here today demonstrates that you're feeling serious about hiring the right agent. So let's sign the contract now and put me to work for you. Do you see how easy this becomes once you do what? Practice. Practice it. So let's create some sentences. You guys are going to create some sentences now. I'm going to put the bridge words up. And the outcome that we're looking for is the listener um, the listener in the conversation is going to hire you. So come up with your cause, then cho or choose your bridge word, come up with a cause. I like to choose the bridge word first. Choose the bridge word, put something as the cause, and then what's the effect? And remember, what we're looking for is that they hire you, hire you. So go ahead, take a moment, craft a sentence. As soon as you have your sentence, go ahead and type it in the box. First two out of the gate. Great. I'm going to give it another minute before I read some because otherwise people are typing and then it messes with their typing. All right, so I'll start. So Dave was Dave was in right out of the gate. The two of us meeting today, cause drives you drives is our bridge word. It drives you to partner with me as your agent, so I can get to work selling your home. Love it, love it. Or so that I can sell your home. Even stronger, take out the get to work. It's the two of us meeting today drives you to partner with me as your agent, so I can sell your home. Remember, that's the key to the language of sales too, is sometimes we want to be a little more verbose than we need to. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. So Michelle, our high list of sales ratio demonstrates that we can get your home sold for top dollar. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hiring in Osama, hiring me urges sales your house. We're close. 
we're close on that. Um, is it is it Lady or Lottie? Lady? Lady. It is Lady. Okay, great. Yes. I was going to say Sadie one of the few that I... Sadie with an L. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Um, as someone who always says, my name is Kara, I care uh, about you. That's so I, I love that you that you did Sadie with an L. Um, our meeting here today empowers you to choose the right agent and hire me. Excellent. Excellent. Stacy, us meeting today settles your concerns about the present market and stimulates you to allow me to prove myself. Lots of good words in there. Cassie, our recommendation to let our team stage the property illustrates our understanding, it should be your understanding of what will yield you the best results. Because remember, it's about them, not you. So it's not your understanding. It's the listener's understanding. Keep that in mind where everything we're doing is to help the listener. So Devon, pricing your house right results in more buyers showing interest leading to more offers on the table. Great. Chris, Oh, I'm like, wait, you got a twofer. Us meeting today makes makes you comfortable in hiring me to make your next move. Tell them, just us meeting today makes you comfortable in hiring me to make your next move. So let's do the thing, do the right thing and sign the paperwork. People don't, so do you hear what, what I want you all to pay attention to is as I'm reading these, you're not arguing with what I'm saying. You're going along with it. And when you start talking about like advanced language of sales, you're going to do things and you're meeting with someone, you're going to do this like, you know, just us meeting here today makes you comfortable in hiring me to help you make your next move. Did you see me nodding my head? Because the person on the other end of that is getting what message? It's all good. It's okay. Yep. Exactly. So, uh, Chris, our last one in here, our conversation today shows your desire to get your home on the market and hire me to get to work for you. Great job, everyone. Great job. Let's do, let's do, let me see. We have time for one more. So, um, here's an important one in today's market. Any of you have listings that might be sitting? Yeah, it's happening. We're back to those price reductions. So let's do one with this. The outcome is to have the seller reduce their price. So we want to get a price reduction. The outcome we want is that the seller reduces their price. So what's the cause? What's your bridge word? And the effect is that they're going to reduce the price or however you would like to phrase a price reduction. Okay. All of a sudden they started jumping way up. So, all right. So we'll start with, we'll start with these. Remember, we're looking for a price reduction. Pricing your home correctly leads to more offers and selling quickly. That's a, that's a great one. From, and that was from Stephanie. Michelle, we have changing our price to reflect today's market will result in a quicker sale. Absolutely. Because whatever they're doing now isn't working. Um, David said, chatting with me today demonstrates your understanding that we need to lower the list price, resulting in more offers on your home. And again, like we said earlier, does that automatically going to happen? No, when you really dissect it. And yet, you know, David, just chatting with me here today demonstrates your understanding that we need to lower the price, resulting in getting more offers for your home or an offer for your home, right? It's all in the way you say it then. That's why so much of our course is not just writing these things. It's actually practicing and speaking. So Devon, reducing your price empowers you to look at more offers. Great sentence. Lady, reducing the price today stimulates more buyers to make more offers on your home. Yep. 
Stacy, us talking today resolves your concerns and helps you understand the need, the needed urge to lower the price. Ooh, the urge. Ooh, makes me want to do something right now. So the reducing, reducing the price of your listing today generates more interest in your listing. Uh, Chris, reviewing the latest market statistics compels you to improve the price and remain competitive. It's a competitive market right now, and it and it helps to lower our prices for a better and faster results. In order to urge your house sales process, this leads to reduce our price. Osama, we're going to work on we're going to work on some of this because you've got the right idea. And I think it might just be a little bit of a language barrier there. So I'd love to work with you on that. So Basola says the data shows that the price reduction would position your home to get sold in the timeline you desire. And Chris, adjusting the price today to be in alignment with today's market generates more showings and a higher probability of getting a great offer. Nobody's arguing with these things. Sarah says the lack of offers with no negative feedback means your home is overpriced and you should consider a reduction that results in more offers. I love that you all had that and put in there that more offers. Um, here's another way to look at it. Um, you know, cause I always write out some examples for, for some of these, you know, rising inventory and no offers proves that we need to reposition our asking price, right? So think about this. You guys have done a great job. And remember, when you enroll in MAPS language of sales, it's going to result in you having more success as an agent, guaranteed. Is that true? Yes. No, no. Seriously, you get to decide. You get to decide. I mean, you can take a chance and enroll and maybe learn some more great things like we did today. I mean, if you loved something that if you if you learn something today that you know that you can put into use, give it a thumbs up in the in the box or say I did something like that. You know you learned something today. Um so you can take that chance and enroll or you can keep using your habitual language. Either way, it's your choice. What I do know is this, though. If you keep using your current level of language skills, you're going to keep getting the result you're getting. You didn't show up here because you, you didn't think you needed something different, right? I mean, how many of you are feeling a shift in the market right now? Every single one of us. Every single one of us. They've been telling us this since the beginning of the year, since the fourth quarter last year. Gary's been saying this is going to be the slowest, the lowest. And we're feeling that, right? You're feeling a shift. How about in the way you conduct business? I mean, we're talking to some of my one-on-one -on -one clients and their ISAs are having to make way more calls, have way more conversations to get the same business. Consider this. There may never be a, a another time in your career when your level of skills may be the determining factor in controlling your destiny the way it is right now. And what I mean by that is, if we know the number of appointments we need to go on, and we know that it's down because of the economic factors we're currently experiencing and the way that data is being delivered and the way that people are reacting to phone calls and texts and all these things, then isn't every appointment, every appointment worth so much more? Aren't they more important than ever? We don't have any throwaway appointments anymore. Instinctively, you're already beginning to understand the need to take advantage of the opportunity to increase your sales through the language of sales. And if you wanna to begin to master your language skills, not my language skills, not your neighbor's language skills in the boxes, your language skills, well, because you definitely recognize that communication is going to be a key component, if not the most critical component in surviving in this upcoming market and taking it and thriving in the next, then you need to enroll now and join me in the next MAPS language of sales. So just here's some details and pay attention to that discount code. I'm going to invite you to enroll and join me. Sessions begin one week from today. At this exact time, they're at two o'clock central, three o'clock Eastern, one o'clock Mountain, twelve o'clock Pacific. It's a it's about a fifty five minute course. 
we're six sessions. We're going to, we're going to teach you amazing things, or you're going to learn two to three language patterns, concepts, et cetera, that you can immediately use in every single class. What we're also going to be doing is ask, we have our special Facebook group. You're going to have practice and role play partners, because again, if you're learning a new language or you're retooling the language, you know, the important thing to remember is it's not just writing it. It's not just writing it, it's actually speaking it as well, right? Now, here's the really cool part. Although we're live and it's going to be interactive, every single one is recorded, which is why I read all of those for the people that were listening, because they can't see the chat box. Everyone is recorded and you're going to have those for 60 days after the class ends. Graham, thanks for putting that up there. So you're going to have it September 20th. You're going to have it until after Thanksgiving. So you can literally do the class twice in the time frame that you have access to the recordings. You can play them as much as you want. Now, here's the other thing. It's $150 a month for two months. And yet we've got the code for 15% off. Um, I fought to have this. Typically it's only a 10% code. I fought to have this for all of you because I know how important this is. So just use that code web15 for 50% off. And Devon, I love that it's South African time, my, my South African friend. So Remember, we'll have a great private Facebook group where we can review our sessions, ask questions. Um, it's 150 a month, Stephanie, for two months. Um, six sessions training. And in, here's the thing. Intuitively, you know that you're already paying a far greater price for the language skills that you haven't mastered. And as a participant today, you get that, you get that code. Thanks for being here with me today. I'm going to stay on for a minute or a minute or two afterwards in case anybody has any questions. I'm happy to answer. What questions can I answer for you right now? Thank you, Stephanie. Thanks, Michelle. If anybody has any questions, um, Sheila just put in in. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. My email, it's very simple, Kara at caramall.com. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. I look forward to seeing you all in the class. You know how important this is. Let's, let's have some fun together. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.